Hi guys, welcome back. Okay, I've been gone. I know. During the week that I've been gone, now, gone for me is a week. I mean, it's not like I've taken off months. I've taken off a week. Um, we're in my second week now, and I, I had to put out a video because my friends are beginning to panic. I'm fine. My, but it's at the point now that I have to at least open up a little bit about what's going on in my life to just so that you guys understand. So, and I don't have to be making up little bits and piece excuses for my absenteeism. Okay, let's start with one. Yes, my husband is in the hospital again, which was not such a far stretch of the imagination because the people who know me know my husband's been sick. If you were around last year, and you can go back in the videos, um, my husband died last summer basically twice. He was not just sick, he was very sick. And during the year, it's been almost a year, I can't believe it. Uh, during this year, they spent a lot of time trying to figure out why he got into that condition because they never did know in the hospital why he was, his kidneys shut down and his heart was failing and he blew up like a balloon with water. They never knew. So during this year, he's been sick a dozen times. You guys just don't know. I don't tell you every time he goes into the hospital. He's been in the hospital many times this year. Um, some of my close friends know, of course, but it's nothing that I need to make public because it's not any life or death thing. And this time, it's not a life or death type of thing. Basically, what they found out about with my husband was that this is all his problems with his the swelling and the swelling causes an overload on the kidney and then the fluid causes an overload on the heart and then he goes into heart failure and he ends up back in the hospital. What is the beginning of the chain? What caused all of this? Well, during the year and enough tests, um, we, we know basically or think we know, every doctor seems to be in agreement, and the tests all come back the same, pointing in this, in the, in this direction, is that he has something called, oh, it's a peripheral vascular, okay, his veins don't work, <laughs> basically. So veins carry blood away from the heart and into the extremities. Uh, I mean, sorry, arteries carry the, uh, blood, oh, arteries carry blood away from the heart. Veins carry blood or lymph fluids back to the heart to pick up the oxygen and it gets distributed all over the body and it goes in every direction. Well, my husband's legs, the veins in his legs do not work. And there's only three of them that don't work. And his problem is the blood goes into his legs and it's supposed to be carried back out of his legs by his veins and they're not doing their job, which is completely fixable. What he has, he needs a procedure. Now we have to get him into the condition that he can go for the procedure. And the procedure to fix his legs was supposed to be Tuesday, which I guess is today, but he's in the hospital because he got COVID. So did I, and so did my father. And I'm done with COVID, hopefully. Um, this is my second time having it, my father's second time having it, and then my daughter got it, um, and she got it very mild, uh, was done with it within four days. Uh, so we do have some immunity, but we all caught COVID and well, part of the lymphatic system in people, um, they kind of, uh, it washes things. It carries the antibodies all over the body. It's that's what the lymphatic system does. And with his veins being the way he is, all that lymphatic tissue went down, all that lymphatic fluids, went into his legs, his legs blew up, it got higher and higher in his body, it hit his kidney, and that's why he's back in the hospital. So basically what they just have to do is give him a diuretic, which he needs to take by IV. He can't take it by mouth. He needs the IV version, and that gets the fluid out. 
And this time, once they get the fluid out of them, which it's it's starting to go down, it's going away, they're going to take him immediately to get the procedure done. Like, they're not going to wait the day he gets out, get back in here, you're, you know, finally you're good, let's get this procedure done, they're going to fix the veins. It takes three months for them to heal, and it should fix or at least make the situation completely reversible, you know, once he's starting to get the fluids out of his legs, they don't build up, his kidney doesn't overload, it doesn't overload the heart, and he can live a life. <coughs> That's the COVID cough. Sorry, I still have that, it's a little residual. Um, so, yes, he has been in the hospital, and when he gets into the hospital, I go on a day schedule, and... I don't get anything done during the day. I have to be on a night schedule to get anything done. And if you notice my desk, I'm too tired to even clean up my desk to do a video. This is me. I, this is when my brain works the best. I've given up trying to fight it. I can work in a teeny tiny space, clear it for the camera, and then everything outside the realm of what the camera is seeing, you wouldn't believe what it looks like. Um, I've had I've had to edit out crashes, <laughs> like everything just falling over. That's just and and I've given up trying because that's just my brain. Because no matter how many organizational systems I have, and I have everyone on the market, they just fill up, and they fill up, and they fill up, and there's just no way I'm going to keep my desk clean. My brain does not function. Orderly. I have a dysfunctional brain that works functionally when things look like this. Uh, the artist brain, what can I tell you? I'm the most creative. And most artists, they say, the mo that's why uh, very few people have really super orderly uh, craft rooms. They don't stay that way. And don't believe what you see on Pinterest and do not believe what you see on YouTube. Because the truth of the matter is, artist brains work like this. A disaster. So that is what's going on personally with me. Now, I thought this video was going to be a big announcement. And if you can guess, yes, I'm going to start selling base paste out of my um, Etsy shop. Now, there's a lot to that. I mean, it's more than you even think. I have to get this stuff in. I have. I mean, I had to order it. I had to find the sources price everything out, get the paste made, and the, there is just first world, world problems or third world problems for me, whatever, but that is um, the truth of it. it. You can't just wake up in the morning and say, I'm going to have a functional business the next day. So also, school is important. Being able to ask a professor a question. <clears throat> now, I know a lot. I know plenty about color blending. I can color blend paints. I can color blend any, just every, any medium out there. That's not my problem. My problem was knowing the whys. I wanted to know the chemicals, why things were reacting the way they were. And I got, I went to school. And that's where I've been a lot of the time this week, is been in school. I took a seminar. I was able to talk to people and to find out, well, this is what I'm doing. Why is this reacting this way or that way? And I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about and how I fixed a lot of the problems. Um, just a little bit of education. That's all you need is a good teacher. The best way to say this is pigments react differently because they're all chemically different. Now, that's a very basic principle and not hard to figure out. Um, so people think to themselves, well, why does this set and, you know, I have a set of things, but the greens just look awful. Why can't the companies just make a perfect set of everything? Well, because different pigments react differently in different uh, binders. So what you have orange reacting 
chemically green is completely different pigment even though it's a pigment and you would think well just make it green no it doesn't work that way so what I needed to do to be comfortable enough to sell my product to you I don't really mind like a DIY, I mean, everybody said to me the same thing. Why are you giving away your, your secrets? Why? You, I got more comments. Well, patent this, patent this. I'm, and, and I understand how people were saying it's the most popular comment topic out there. Everybody starts the same thing. Well, you got to patent this. Stop giving away your secrets, yada, yada. It's not the problem of giving away secrets. It's not a big secret to create a pigment, a binder, and a, you know, a solution. I mean, it's not, it's, that's not the problem. It's not a secret, and it works no matter what. Um, pigments are pigments. They're the, the same pigment I'm using is the same pigment as Holbein is using. It's the same chemical. Now, what makes different products different, well, there's a lot of things that make them different. It, the base pigments are the same. That's why you get a lot of these Chinese companies and people think, oh, um, they're the same pencil because the same color comes out of each. No, they're very different. And I didn't know how to explain it when I was working with Andy saying, no, his base and his his uh, binders are different than this one. The pigments all come from the same place, the pigment uh, manufacturers. They're just selling those little bits of color as a chemical compound. And that's what pigments are. They're basically uh, a chemical compound that refracts light and creates that color. Well, I knew this. I didn't know how to explain it. Um, but it becomes more of an issue now that I'm creating something. And I'm not going to create crap. I like my pigments good. And I expect never to accept anything that's not good. So that's why I've not rushed into this by any means. Um... I could have, day one, here, th throw this, 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 and threw it out the door, but I didn't want to. Now, you see these little things? These are my tester pans. I've got thousands of these by now, where I tweak up the recipe, and I, I create many different ones of these, and I test them, and I test them, and I'm testing. I've got more of things that look like this. Then I have artwork in the house. Now, there were some some colors. Now, I'm using the gallery um, pastels. There are some colors that just do not work out well. And it's my problem, if I'm selling it to you, to fix those issues. The fixing those issues means going back to the chemical compounds they are using to create that pigment and change it. And that's where you're not going to be able to copy me. Um, and I'm not worried about it. Anybody can make paint. Anybody can make a watercolor or, or an acrylic paint. It's not that complicated. What's complicated is putting the chemicals together to create the specific pigments that you put and that from those chemical compounds and that's what makes unique colors and that's where my secrets are going to stay secret well actually in a book um, that I'm putting together but not for public view um, it's it's gonna be like my Bible that I'm gonna pass down on to my children my secret recipe is for the colors now that's where I'm going to be different. You're not going to be able to have my colors as being the same colors out of any pastel set. And the the quality of the pigments that I'm going to be using are super expensive. So at the beginning 
of this, it's going to be in limited amounts. Now, I want to show you some things. This is ultramarine. This is um, not the marker. It, this is regular base paste. And I told you that you have to leave them set. See that white around the blue center? What I wanted to know is why that white was happening. And it happened in certain colors. It happens in my darker blues. But my lighter blues, like this, are gorgeous down to the bottom. It doesn't happen. And part of what I learned this week is the chemical compounds that make up ultramarine do this. They're difficult to work with. <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, now, black does the same reaction, and it's it was my problem. I want to show you some blacks. Um, I have them on my desk. Now, if you think that I don't test, these are my testing samples. And they all represent a different... Uh, recipe. Now, I was, everybody that's going to make base paste from the recipe that I gave you is going to have the same problem. Your blacks are going to do what that blue did. It's the basic structure of the system. The pigment that goes into the black is going to cause that. It's not the recipe. It's not the paste. It's the pigment. It's my job to fix it. And I believe I've done it, but I don't trust it yet until these settle down and I can watch them change. Now, so far, I'm really comfortable with white. This is a sample of my white. I have two versions that you guys don't have the versions of. One is this. Now, this was a full container when I started, and I know it's dirty. It has black because I've been creating gray using it. This is a chunky version. I like this version better. Um, this is the smooth version. This is the version you will be able to afford. This has one other substance in it that cannot be... <laughs> purchased, unfortunately, in large bulk. What it comes in is itty-bitty containers this big for mega amounts of bucks. So I'm not right now, until I could source it, going to be able to use this one. But I needed to come up with something that I could reproduce. And this is identical to this. They're the same. I got it. I did it. So now we have what you will create from the pastels is not the same. I'm making an opaque. You guys, if you're doing it from the DIY that I gave you, it's going to be translucent. Now, I'll show you. I'm going to do a whole video on this, but I, I, I'll show you the difference. This is the black. It's about as black as black can be because the pigments that I'm using doesn't get any blacker than that. Um, this is it mixed with the white. It turns for the gray. So I can get a really nice uh, grayscale going with it, which is something I couldn't do before. Now I can. And this is why I waited. And I'm not just putting things out. These all have chemical pigments in them. They've got titanium white. They have um, cobalt black. They've got um, all different pigments. This is a combination of two different blacks to be able to get it this black. Um, this is also a toothy paper, which it works this well on toothy paper. It's a little bit lighter on smooth paper. Here's... I stick my fingers in these things all day long. This is me creating the gray grayscale. This is the this black. 
on smooth paper. It doesn't have as much tooth. Um, here's my white mixed with the blue. And that's a pretty, pretty nice pigment over black. I mean, if you guys know that black is extremely hard to cover without completely changing it. And I got it pretty, pretty good. There's white, so it's, it's white and blue mixed together. I don't know if this one has mica in it, so it's going to be very shiny. So this is the type of stuff that you will get in my Etsy shop. Um, it's just not, like, it's soon. I don't want to put it out before it's, you know. I've got a couple of colors that I've already worked out. This one is so pretty. This is one of my favorite colors. My hands have been in it all day long. This is how it's going to come. These are way too big. Way too big. Um, you should cut it back. In fact, I'm cutting mine back because you get a better pigmentation when you cut it back, but I'll talk about that when I do the video. I wanted to show you, this is the first color that I am confident is ready, like people ready. And this is a metal. It's not really a metallic. It's it changes depending upon the light. I have samples here somewhere. It's really cool. Um, this is one of them. Depending on how much light you have, it's going to look it's going to look green because it's up against the blue, but if you take away the blue, it looks more blue. It's one of those colors that you got to go, "What is that?" And this is the stuff that I want to create. It's nicely pigmented. It's got a little mica shine in it. That's why it's gone. So, like, these are the things that you're going to get. I called that Blue Envy. Um, and I'm going to probably end up putting the chemical pigment names on the Etsy shop because there's just no room on the little things to put the chemistry on it. But I will give you guys the, the chemistry of it too. Um, let me see what else. Oh, this stuff, this dirty looking thing. And this, because my fingers have been in it, this isn't ready yet. It's almost there, but what you do with this, I made a blender and this goes in between the colors. And it makes a perfect blend between them. It gets rid of any line that you would have. It also lightens spots that you made too dark. And it is, I'm calling it cloud buster because you can't even help but make fluffy clouds when you use this. And if you think my video making clouds was easier before, it's 10 times easier with this stuff now. Trust me between the opaque white that I created and the um, blender that I created, you're, you're never going to be scared of clouds ever again. Um, and that includes storm clouds and all the skies that you want to do. So it's all coming, I promise. Um, just give me a little time. And I guess I will see you guys in my next video. Take care. Bye-bye.